Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Living with the glorious Quran. Yesterday, the people who took part in the expedition of Rajab that led to the death of Al Hadrami uh, were shown pardon by Allah. Their reward was established and they rejoiced in Allah's uh, pardon to them for what has happened. Allah described them as people who are seeking for Allah's mercy, which he has given them. Now, let us turn our attention to the verse again. Those who had striven and struggled in the path of Allah. They have the hope for the mercy of Allah. And Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. They have hope for the mercy of Allah even though he has relented towards them. But they only have hope. As we see in the verse, because Allah does what he wills, no one can compel him on what must be done. He does what he wants to do. So, they are hoping for a less mercy. However much you exert your utmost in service to your Lord, you do so between between hope and fear. What guarantees have you that you will not backslide? To a life of godlessness and kufr at the end of your life. They have hope for the mercy of Allah and Allah is oft forgiving, merciful. Whatever you are doing, nobody is certain of anything. You can finish salah right now and Allah hurls it at your face. But we pray that as we offer that service, he will accept it from us. The Sahaba. May Allah be pleased with them. They asked the Prophet ﷺ when he said, None of you will enter the paradise because of his works, because of his deeds, righteousness. Even you, O Messenger of Allah, said, Even me, I will not be able to do that except where Allah covers me with his mercy. So whatever we do of service to Allah is bain al khawfi wal raja between fear of our iniquities and hope for his mercy that he would grant us. The Sahaba, may Allah be pleased with them, asked the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam concerning many things. the answer of which questions formed part of the corpus of the Sharia, commandments and laws guiding the lives of Muslims. Now, this explanations and answers to their myriad questions 
descended gradually with love and tenderness and mercy to the multitude of believers that thronged around him sallallahu alaihi wasallam one of the questions that they have asked the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam was concerning strong drink and gambling that is the next verse 219 yasalunaka anil khamri wal maisir qul fihi ma ithmun kabir wa manafi'u lin nas wa ithmuhuma akbaru min naf'ihima yasalunaka anil khamri wal maisir they ask you concerning wine and gambling qul fihi ma ithmun kabir qul fihi ma ithmun kathir wa manafi'u lin nas wa ithmuhuma akbar min naf'ihima that say in them is great sin and some benefit for men but the sin is greater than the profit or than the benefit wa yasalunaka madha yunfiqun qul al'af كذلك يبين الله لكم اياته لعلكم تتفكرون the the latter part of the verse is they ask you concerning what they spend say what is beyond your needs the superfluity of your wealth thus does allah make clear his signs in order that ye may consider some of the sahaba may allah be pleased with them when this verse was revealed in answer to their question on wine and gambling ceased completely from imbibing wine and engaging in gambling they reasoned that since there is sin in it and the sin is greater than the benefit they would not take part in it again out of their own volition but others among them continue to imbibe alcohol and to gamble <clears throat> days went by until a drunken man led people in prayer and committed grave mistakes in in recitation where allah said la a'budu ma ta'budun i will not worship what you worship the drunken imam said a'budu ma ta'budun i worship oh you kufar i worship what you worship and he was leading his fellow companions in salah now those who prayed behind him were distraught and they went to the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam asking him for the second time concerning wine and strong drink and in answer to that question another revelation came down ya ayyuhalladhina amanu لا تقربوا الصلاه وانتم سكارى حتى تعلموا ما تقولون او you who believe do not approach your prayers with a mind befogged drunken until you can understand that which he say with the revelation of this verse wine became prohibited only during prayers another section of the sahaba out of their own will free will stopped imbibing alcohol completely some of them avoided it in the daytime and took it after isha isha prayer 
because since the prayers are so closely connected from one time to the other, after Subh, you have uh, uh, Dhuhr and Asr, Maghrib, Isha. Now, they will stay away from alcohol until after Isha. After Isha, they take alcohol, go to their uh, places of uh, discussion, what you may call in modern uh, terminology as clubs, and then until tomorrow. Now, one day, a party among the Sahaba gathered in a house where they caroused, engaged in drunkenness with a lot of abuse that resulted in fisticuffs. On account of that, Umar ibn al-Khattab went to the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, we need a healing proclamation on wine. O oh, Messenger of Allah, we need a healing proclamation on wine. Umar ibn al-Khattab. And the final nail came down on the coffin of alcohol in the in the in, 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 in another revelation, in another verse, Ya Yuladina Amanu, in Namal Khamru, Wal Maysiru, Wal Ansabu, Wal Aslam Urajisum min Amali Shaitan, Fajdani Buhula Allah Kum to Flihun. O ye who believe, verily intoxicants and gambling, dedication of stones and divination by arrows are an abomination of Satan's handiwork. Is true that abomination that you may prosper. And so it was that the prohibition of alcohol came, of course, gradually, as did all proclamations in the Sharia, until finally intoxicants of all kinds were prohibited. Before this gradual prohibition, the Sahaba were imbibing the substance and trafficking in it. It was part of everyday life. It was part of their merchandise, part of their mercantile. But when the revelation came, of course, everything had to change. Alcohol was both a source of pleasure and livelihood. Thus, immediate and total abstinence would have been difficult on the believers. It had to be gradual prohibition until the door was completely closed. When we meet tomorrow, we shall see and study more concerning uh, alcohol, liquor, and other strong drink intoxicants generally. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.